Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to the library tour of Doom. <laughs> this is where we go through my books, or somebody's books, one book at a time, book by book, shelf by shelf, forever. The library tour of Doom was commencing perfectly fine, chugging along at steady rate back at Hyde Cottage, and it is still continuing even in this ancient Vermont house. <laughs> so, And today we are going from uh, our gigantic, uh, pretentious, and largely dispiriting work of historical fiction yesterday uh, to a much lighter work, <laughs> a, book, a work that, unless you can find it in an ebook, might be difficult for you to come across, but uh, there are bits of it that are worth your time. This is uh, Beyond the Gates of Dream, an anthology by Lynn Carter, who, uh, that, this is a, a terrific cover. I forget who the, uh, the cover artist is for this, but this is an anthology of uh, uh, science fiction and, short, and fantasy short stories and bits and pieces. It's got a very good introduction. And it was the, uh, the, the dream, the, the sort of creation of a man named Lynn Carter, who is uh, decidedly uh, third rate when it comes to science fiction and especially fantasy in terms of a writer. He was a bit of, uh, he was a bit of a genius as an editor in the sense of pulling anthologies together, getting people to work together, uh, sensing the right balance for work. This book is a fairly good example of what he could do when he did that sort of thing. Uh, he wasn't great at it. He knew everybody in the industry and he knew all the, uh, the people who were great at being editors at doing this sort of thing, but he was still good at it. Uh, it Lynn Carter, uh, was weird. <laughs> he was very odd, very enthusiastic, but, uh, monstrously self-destructive and also egomaniacal and a bit on the delusional side. In other words, even though he went to school, I think in New York and bounced all around the world, uh, he was very much a Florida man. <laughs> Those of you who are not from America may not know the phenomenon of Florida man. Uh, feel free to Google it. <laughs> it, it. It just means that, uh, as bat crap crazy as the rest of the country is, the rest of the country looks at Florida and says, boy, they're bat crap crazy. <laughs> and that was, that was very much Lynn Carter, but he had a gift for making friends and he did his best to keep them. He could be difficult to know, but, uh, was endlessly fascinating. And this anthology is really interesting. This would be something that I would love to find on my own as opposed to finding it here and trying to steal it. <laughs> oh, because this has a couple of interesting things in it. Lynn Carter could write a fantasy short story, a 10-page fantasy short story, in about an hour. And the short story that came off his typewriter when he did that would not need anything in the way of editing. It wouldn't be in any way memorable beyond the moment of reading it, but you wouldn't want to stop reading it while you were reading it. That was, that was the, the curse of his creative mediocrity. Uh, and there's quite a bit in here, and oh my, I think Lynn Carter is entirely out of print now, but if anyone ever decided to bring his collected works into print, they'd run out of paper. <laughs> he wrote all the time, wrote constantly, and had a gift. It was shared by a number of his contemporaries uh, in the fantasy and science fiction world of uh, writing finished prose. I mean, that this is, this is often said of Asimov, but it was true of Gordon Dixon, uh, Robert Heinlein, uh, even Alfred Bester. Alfred Bester used to do more more revising than a lot of these people, but even so, the stuff that came out of the typewriter first was clean. It didn't it didn't have any mistakes in it. Didn't have any plot holes in it. Might not have been, you know, torqued up to the maximum of drama or pathos, but it was very much unlike, for instance, the first draft fiction, mainstream fiction, of the day which often bore no resemblance at all to the finished copy uh, that came out down the line. These people, uh, the, the, uh, the B and C lister science fiction and fantasy authors, the hacks like Lynn Carter, uh, were constantly writing for money. And take it from me, when you're constantly writing for money, you quickly develop the knack of producing finished prose at your first go round. You might improve on it, but you want the thing that comes out of the typewriter to be capable of being sent off. You just do, because there's going to be another thing that has to come off the typewriter right away. <laughs> and those of you who are uh, born in the 21st century will have to Google the word typewriter. I, if you've never heard of one before, you will be astounded that we ever got any work done on them. They look like torture devices. Nevertheless, I myself got a lot of work done on a typewriter, and Lynn Carter dwarfs that. 
we're talking three, four, five books in a year that he would write. And this anthology is interesting, uh, if I remember correctly, for two things. He was also good at collaborating. And one of the things, one of the knacks of collaborating that he mastered, pretty much because he had to, but it's not easy. Any of you who have ever done a collaboration will know the, the absolute working jewel of a collaboration is when two people come together at roughly the same talent level or drastically different talent levels that, that lock together like puzzle pieces. Like, for instance, if one of the two people is really good at plotting and doesn't really care about writing prose and the other person isn't that good at plotting but loves to write prose, that's perfect. If both love to write prose, though, then the golden situation is that both people in the collaboration have a roughly equal talent. Uh, and Lynn Carter, it's much harder than that when you engage in a collaboration with someone who has much more talent than you do. Invariably, in a collaboration like that, I have done this. Uh, I have collaborated with all across the spectrum. And invariably, in a collaboration like that, when you know that your writing partner has much more talent than you do, invariably, at some point in the process, the utterly awkward question comes up of, well, what do you need me for? And you just sit there in agony in the old snail mail days waiting for the response to come in the mail that says, well, now that you mention it, I don't. <laughs> now, a, a diplomatic collaborator partner will never say that. But nevertheless, um, it can raise hackles. It's, it can be very uncomfortable. Lynn Carter never collaborated with anybody uh, who wasn't more talented than he was and was adept at it. He was really adept at it, which is great. That That's fantastic. Some of you may know... Uh, I think probably the most famous collaboration that he ever did with someone who was more talented than he was was with El Spray de Camp. Uh, when they they sort of collaborated on rehabbing, uh, reformatting, and cashing in on uh, Robert E. Howard's Conan stories in, uh, in in those those gorgeous vintage paperbacks with Frank Frazetta covers that are just well, I mean, I I talk all the time on my channel about how I I kind of fallen out of love with mass market paperbacks. I get them if I can, but I'd much rather a trade paperback or a big hardcover or even an ebook. Uh, but if I saw those those Lynn Carter and Elspreg the Camp Conan mass markets, Conan the Buccaneer, Conan the whatever, I would get them all in a heartbeat. I wouldn't care what shape they were in. Uh, uh, but in addition to that, in addition to that collaboration, Lynn Carter was willing to collaborate with anybody. And this collection has a posthumous collaboration with Robert E. Howard. This collection has a story, uh, where's it here? The Hand of Nergal, uh, which the, the, the table of contents is with Robert E. Howard. Robert E. Howard left a fragment of the Hand of Nergal. Uh, and in this book, Lynn Carter does what, what he and Elspreg de Camp would become famous for doing and just rehabs it fleshes it out, finishes it, makes it a story. So the, the kind of thing that uh, an entire generation of fans were introduced to the literature of Robert E. Howard, especially his Conan world, uh, through those ministrations. And that generation, I count myself among them, have a huge debt of gratitude to Lynn Carter and L. Sprague de Camp. Uh, just a huge debt of gratitude for those books, which were just a feast of chronologies and maps and whatnot afterwards. And uh, while at the same time, a later generation of Robert E. Howard fans in the 21st century uh, look at those editions and say, well, but we're calling Robert E. Howard great, right? We're calling him a foundational figure in not only pulp fantasy, but the, the American fantasy genre just in general. And we don't treat great authors like this, right? We don't, we don't sandstone over their works and publish them in a different order than the author intended and even change the text. That is absolutely true, and uh, editions of Conan have come out that don't do that, that don't do anything like what, what uh, these people did. Uh, nevertheless, uh, it's a debt of gratitude, and th this is a perfect, in this little anthology, is a perfect example of what Lynn Carter and Elspreg de Camp did, uh, what you, where the Hand of Nergal here comes across as a finished work. You wouldn't, if you read it without any uh, editorial interference, you'd never know the, the shape that Robert E. Howard had left it in. Uh, and that's one of the interesting collaborations in here. I don't want to say, uh, it, it feels a little a little rude to say uh, that the only two things in here are things that Lynn Carter didn't write alone. <laughs> it feels a little rude to his shade. I know his ghost is not here in this room with me because he reeked 
and I'd be able to tell from a mile away. But the other thing that's in here is also a collaboration. It's called Master of the Masters of the Metropolis, where he collaborates with Randall Garrett, a fantasy author who is now completely forgotten and who deserves not to be. Randall Garrett had easily five or six times Lynn Carter's talent in every way, and yet was so sweet, so so gentle and wonderful that even if Lynn Carter had written him that fateful letter, "What do you need me for?" would never got a reply back saying, you know, now that I think of it, I can't, I don't know why I need you. Instead, it would have been a fulsome letter about how wonderful you are, you're indispensable. Uh, Randall Garrett wrote a whole bunch of great stuff. Uh, it's all out of print. It, it, I, as far as I know, there was also a, I believe, a Timescape paperback uh, of the sort of the best of Randall Garrett uh, that uh, had a very fetching Rowena cover. For all I know, all of Randall Garrett and that best of her are here in, in, this, in this old house's library. It's unbelievable how big this library is. So they could be here, and if so, we'll get to them. But I know that I couldn't promise that at my library at Hyde Cottage because I don't have any Randall Garrett there. Again, if I came across an old paperback, I would grab it in a heartbeat, no matter what kind of shape it was in. And uh, that story... Masters of the Metropolis. I haven't read it in forever. As soon as I finish this video, I'm going to very gently read that. The last thing in the world I want to do when prowling through somebody else's library and pulling out uh, this thing is this thing was from 1969. That's the only time this, this, this particular edition was ever printed. Yeah, 1969. So that's 50 years. Uh, the last thing I'm going to do is destroy a 50-year-old paperback in somebody else's collection, especially when that person has ample opportunity to poison my food. <laughs> But I am gently going to read Masters of the Metropolis because where will I ever see it again? Nowhere. <laughs> so, uh, so your library tour of Doom book for today is a recommend. But again, that feels a little a little tormenting to do because I don't think there's an ebook of this, and you're certainly never going to see it in a used bookstore. If you do, any of these old these old things with these with these old great. Uh, Lynn Carter, Ron Goulart, old science fiction world hacks just banging away. Grab them all. You're going to love them. Absolutely love them. They're a bit of an acquired taste, but once you acquire that taste, you won't be able to get enough. And certainly, uh, if you encounter a block of Lynn Carter, he wrote lots and lots of stuff. If you encounter a block of it, grab it all. I guarantee you, unless you, unless somebody's, you know, going for the collectible market, if you find a bunch of these old paperbacks at a yard sale or a church sale or whatever, they'll be cheap. Uh, and if you see this one, grab it. I will envy you. I would love to grab a copy of this, uh, if only for those two bits that are in it. Although, I, I might read a couple of the other stories that are here. I might do that. I'm never going to see this volume again. Uh, but we'll get we'll, we'll get to Randall Garrett in good time. But in the meantime, the, the spotlight for today is Lynn Carter, a weirdo, uh, led a, a weird and strained personal life, but whose professional life had tendrils that extended everywhere, knew everybody, estimated talents with a cold forensic accuracy just just amazing wished i mean i'm sure that in his darkest moments deep deep in the night uh he might have wished that he had more talent although maybe not uh, there occasionally there are things that i read from him that lead me to believe that maybe he thought he was the most talented one of the bunch i can't believe you could maintain that attitude if you were collaborating with someone like randall garrett on a story i can't believe you could if you were lynn carter but maybe he could uh, one way or another that's your book for today, Beyond the Gates of Dream, uh, which I think also has a fragment. Uh, yeah, the manticore, a work in progress. Only Lynn Carter. Just chuck it all at the barn door. <laughs> anyway, we'll, uh, I felt I owed you something like this for yesterday, friend. We'll see. We'll see what where karma stops tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.